10 ways the rich manage their day. 10 ways the rich manage their day. This is a very important subject. Don't go away. Make sure you subscribe, like, press the like button, share the platform, let others know about the money masterclass. So if people can stop complaining and start getting enriched with the teaching from this platform. You see, if you cannot manage a day, how will you manage a week? And if you can't manage a week, how will you manage a month, a year, or a lifetime? It is very important for us to realize it is the days that make up the, the week and the weeks that make up the months. The months make the years, the years make the lifetime. Everything we do is a result of habits. You cannot wake up one day and just be wealthy. The way you live, the habits you form, crystallize to help shape the way your life ends and if you are able to create wealth. So let's start. Number one, the rich are motivated daily. They wake up motivated. Some people wake up demotivated, but the rich, they wake up motivated. Pure, poor people never prepare for the day. They just wake up and, and they just go on and they live a fire brigade life. The fire department, in my opinion, I'm not a fireman, never does anything until there is a crisis, a fire, some problem, some old mother who, for whose cart is on a tree and can't come down and they need to help her rescue it. But the rich, they take steps, they do, th they do things. The rich read motivational books, they listen to audio books, they focus on positive activities that will lead them in the direction of making their life effective and in the creation of wealth. Number two, they set goals every day. Majority of rich people set goals for themselves. And we're talking of get rich goals, not just any goal. You can set a goal that you want to wake up, but get rich goals. People who set goals achieve more because they know where they are going and they focus on the important part of their goals. In other words, they can say, I want to do 100 things. Then they select the 10 best. Then they put a hashtag beside the three most important. The things that lead them in the direction of the challenges they face and the goals they have that will result in wealth creation. Number three, they focus on few things. If you want to go far, Focus on few things. Rolling stones gather no moss. But those who are going somewhere, they take little things, maximize, put all their effort until the thing breaks forth for them. They may not be specialists in other areas. No one had ever asked Bill Gates why he only focuses on software. He doesn't produce cars. He's not into automobile engineering. It's not his strength. Focused. And then because he had found his focus, he every day comes up with concepts, ideas that make things work in his chosen field. Number four, rich people are open to lifelong education and self-improvement. How does this happen? Curiosity. One of the characteristics of creative people is curiosity. They don't take things because we said two plus two is four. They want to know what makes two plus two to be four. They are curious. They ask questions. They question the regular. They question the way things are. They say, why are things the way they are? They investigate until they find what the truth is. Galileo, Copernicus, these are, these are astronomers. Who, de who decided to, by the studying of the stars and using astronomical equipment which they invented, came to conclusion that our Earth is not just a flat place, it's a round ball. In fact, people resisted them until time proved them right. Same thing. If you are going to create wealth, you've got to go beyond the degrees you have and learn, 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 learn new things. 
If you've never used a computer before, use one. If you don't know how to use certain softwares, use it. If there's a new knowledge in the area of your chosen field, pursue it. If you have to go to a business school, I mean, at no time on this planet has information been so available, either on the, on the phone in your hand by way of Google or the iPad you carry. But even beyond that, people who create wealth can take the time, go for one week to an advanced seminar on how to enhance their knowledge in their chosen field. This is what wealthy people do. Wealthy people will pay what some people pay for four years or for one year of education in a high institution, they'll pay it for one week. They invest in their mind. If they hear of a seminar, while others are screaming, it's expensive. And the same people who scream about how expensive it is, who spend the cost of that seminar to buy some shoe which they want to show their friends. But a wealthy man will spend the man to, uh, money to enrich his mind so that one day, instead of buying the shoe, he bought the factory. That is how to create wealth. Number five, rich people say no. The rich say no to many interesting things. Daily discipline is a characteristic of the rich. They say no to things that don't add value. They wouldn't go sit down in some pictures, some cinemas, because everybody goes there. The first thing the rich person is doing is calculating how many hours it is going to take to do that. And they would rather watch it on Netflix, in their home, in their own time. The rich are very clear about what they want. They say no. No to people who want to come and waste their time. No to a person who say, are you home? I just want to come and chill out. Wealthy people would only do that chilling and be learning something in the chilling instead of just spending time about nothing. And it's amazing. People do not realize that if they give you time and money, you should take time because time can be multiplied and applied well. And then it can bring value to you. But many poor people don't know how to manage their time. And since they cannot manage a few hours, they can't manage a day. And if they can't manage a day, a week is lost. And they say, oh, well, there's another tomorrow. Well, today is the tomorrow you spoke about yesterday. You've got to realize you want to handle wealth. You need to learn how to say no. Number six, they do the hard things first. First thing in the morning, tackle tough things early in the morning. Sitting down, writing goals. This is what I want to achieve. This is a dream I want to do, I want to achieve. Packing so much into the early hours of the day, writing out the dreams, the vision, making all the most important calls. Because once the day blows open, distractions, no matter how strong, wealthy, and determined you are, there are enough distractions in each day. But when a wealthy man operates, he knows how to pack into his early hours the right things to do. Go and check out from the Richard Branson's to the Elon Musk's to the Warren Buffett's to the Bill Gates, many of these people are early morning people. They realize that when the day is serene and there is less disturbance, you can create so much, you can achieve so much, you can write your goals, you can clearly define what you want to achieve. In fact, it's more like you are listening to yourself, there is a soliloquizing. And if you are a person who is born again, who follows God, you are able also to have a time of meditation and take the time to pray and write out your dream. Number seven, wealthy people visualize success. In another teaching, we are going to take time to really expand the power of your thinking, talking, and think, and you will see how they connect. Your talk and your thought, they go a long way in what you will be. I want you where you are right now to imagine the seaside, Miami Beach, people running around, everyone enjoying themselves while the wind blows 
and the sea is also the waves are coming and going. Somebody's selling ice cream. It's a hot, sunny day. And there's also some hot dogs and burgers to buy. Can you visualize it? I'm sure it almost made you hungry. Same thing. That thing that made you visualize and straight away you could smell the burgers and you could almost practically see the ice cream and taste it on your throat is the same tool given to you by your maker to be able to use to achieve things. Many never use it to do anything. Some use it to visualize evil. So when you visualize success, you expect it, and then you put effort. Then things happen. These are habits of wealthy people. They sit down every day, and they begin to imagine and visualize how the product they are creating, or the service they are providing, or the problem they are solving, how it will bring wealth to them. Because you've heard me say it several times. It is not your passion that makes you wealthy. It is the problem you solve. I hear a lot of young people, I want to follow my passion. Hey, bro, don't follow your passion. Solve a problem, then solve it with passion. Then wealth will come. How many people have wasted? I've been to Hollywood several times, preaching in Los Angeles. For every one actor who made it in Los Angeles, there are 10,000 on the streets of Los Angeles who never got even a part to just walk in the film because they followed their passion. They left home. How many are carrying songs around? Oh, I have a song. This song is going to be a hit. And nobody heard their song. Find problems. Solve the problem. And favor and finance will come to you. Today, there are many people who have solved problems in this 21st century, which we thought was not possible, and are beginning to make us see that, look, if you can think, you can think, change things around. Now we have electric cars moving around, and already explorations with driverless cars. Some might even say, how is that possible? When the car first came in 1886 or thereabout, when the Ford T was created by Henry Ford, some people said, this thing is going to kill man. Anything faster than five miles per hour is too fast. They should live today and see some mean Lamborghinis, some Veyrons, some unusual sports cars move at about 250 miles per hour. So what you question today is the reality of tomorrow. Number eight, avoid junk food. Remember, we're talking about how do you run your daily life to end up being financially successful? What has food got to do with it? Poor people don't do exercise and they don't care what they eat. Full stomach is their first thought. The coronavirus pandemic killed a lot of people in a particular community. In the United States of America, particularly people of color. In the United Kingdom, particularly people of color. Many have asked the question, could it be racism? Could it be classism? Listen, the worst prejudice is self-prejudice. I do not have all the answers on that. But I am personally convinced, as a person of color myself, I know that in my community, the first thing people think of is food that fills the stomach. The second thing people think of is food that appeals to their taste bud. The third thing people think of is the food of their culture. So people from Ghana would prefer food from Ghana. They would not ask what the nutritional value is the people from kenya the people from the caribbeans the people from nigeria will first think food before they think nutritional value for example if you come from the caribbean you are likely to like salt fish and aki this is fish that is embedded in serious salt salt spikes your blood level salt begins to destroy your capacity, the capacity of your lungs and your, and it heightens your blood level. Same thing with Africa. The Africans like a lot of carbohydrate as long as it fills the stomach. 
there are wealthy people, of course, in all these parts of the world, but we're saying for the new people who are going to break through, you cannot succeed operating on low energy and eating the things that do not help your strength and your health. Also, what's the use creating the wealth and you are not around to enjoy it? You must stay to enjoy it. You must stay to benefit from it. Number nine, avoid <laughs> reality TV and most social media. Yeah, I know we push the money masterclass on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Vimeo, uh, Twitter. I have large following, close to a million on Facebook, close to half a million on Twitter, 40,000 on Instagram. But listen, in order for me to really be focused, I cannot afford to go to those places and stay there because one distraction leads to another distraction, another distraction. You want to create wealth, maximize your hours, maximize your days, maximize your times, make your impact, make your life count, touch lives with your life, do something that nobody thought you could do. And lastly, avoid gambling. The poor always expect luck, luck, luck. Every time I go around, I see lottery places. I see places where there is horse racing betting. I see places where they have a small machine for betting. Most people who sit there to bet are poor people. And they make their contributions every hour to somebody who's collecting and becoming a mega millionaire. They do not realize, let me tell you the truth, I do not have all the answers on betting. But I once met a young man, I said, what job do you do? He said, I'm one of those who do the programming, the computer programming behind the betting company. Oh, so in other words, they manipulate the winning options. Do you think the company that hired him will make him manipulate the system to work against them? No. Matter of fact, I am convinced that they must have created a system where they say, no matter how many times this person plays, give him little, little winnings so he thinks he's winning, so that he'll get sucked in and throw big money at us until we get him departed from his money. So my dear friend, there are several habits that can lead to wealth creation. We've shared with you about 10 today. If you can form these habits, if you apply them daily, you will find your mind beginning to walk in the direction of wealth creation.